Hey, Skycap here. Have you been wondering why the only video review for this mouse is from a channel with 58 subscribers? If so, let's see why. I'm not gonna waste much time on the specs again. I'll link my previous video up top if you wanna check that out. High level overview, 3395 sensor, Omron optical switches, 370 milliamp hour battery, and a controller that's supposed to have 4K, 8K polling capabilities. So let's talk about that first. This mouse uses the Nordic 52832 chip. It's the only mouse I know that does. The Gravistar M1 Pro uses the 52833, as does the Fantec Helios 2 Pro. Most other mice at this price tier use the 52840, which is the flagship Nordic controller. The primary difference between these chips is the amount of flash and RAM available, which doesn't make too much difference for the mouse performance. The most important piece here is that there's a lesser signal strength on the 52832 compared to the 33 or the 40. Again, it's a curious choice on Alienware's part, and for a mouse at this price tier, I would completely expect to see the flagship 52840 versus a lesser variant. I'm not going to harp on the shape too much specifically. Getting down to brass tacks, it's essentially a one-to-one -one clone of the GPX and GPX2. To me, this was already curious enough, considering all the promotion Alienware did about how they worked with 100 Pro Gamers, they worked with Team Liquid, and you know they said they did this over the course of 18 months, so a year and a half to recreate the mouse that most of these pros use anyway. That sounds like some serious R&D. On to the software discussion. This is an update or a follow-up for my initial impressions video. This is still easily the worst aspect or feature of this mouse. Alienware Control Center is absolutely awful, and I'm still not able to use greater than 1K polling on this mouse. On any other mouse, and at this point that's at least 16 different mice, this is the only mouse I've encountered an issue saving and using a higher polling rate with. I'm not the only one having this issue. I did see a comment posted on one of the Alienware shorts. A user was also unable to get the settings saved. I don't know how widespread this issue is. I haven't seen it addressed anywhere, though I haven't really seen much of this mouse mentioned anywhere outside of the promotional material, to be quite honest. Let's take a look at several tests I did with the Emit XV versions of Mouse Tester, V1.6.1 and 1.4.7. These tests show that this mouse definitely does not poll at greater than 1K, even with the setting changed in Command Center, and whether or not the program is open. I did use my laptop with Command Center installed for these tests, just to be sure that that potential requirement of having it installed was met. It's still not polling above 1K. This is an incredible disappointment, especially considering the premium $150 price tag for this mouse. Now I know I've said that the Alienware mouse is better than the GPX, and that's true in terms of the Omron switches. The side buttons are much better, they're much more tactile, it's less pre-travel, and the battery life. But in terms of what it claims to deliver and fails to, that is where the value ultimately falls short. With the GPX2, you at least get some included grip tape, even if it's not great, and 2K polling that actually works for only 10 more dollars at $160. If you're fine with just 1K polling, the OG version of this can usually be had between $115 to $125 on Amazon. The GPX and the GPX2 have the best aftermarket support of any mouse when it comes to grips, skates, weight reduction mods, and other accessories. Bar none, it is the most supported mouse on the market. With the Valor Wireless, you get the same exact sensor as the Alienware Pro, though it does have the Compax controller. You get four swappable magnetic shells, and you get extra mouse gates for a fraction of the price. This mouse is $40 shipped right now, okay? $40, so you could get almost four of these for one of these. All right, so this is by far the best value of the three, and it's not even close. Let's compare the Alienware Pro to other options in the gaming mouse market. If you're set on Omron optical switches and not necessarily the GPX shape, you can get the WL mouse P stacks for $140 plus shipping. It has the better Nordic 52840 controller, 
a 4K dongle. It's got plenty of extra PTFE and glass skates, as well as grips included. You can get the Sprine Gaming Gears PM1. It's $120 plus shipping. It includes grips. It has the better Nordic controller. It's 8K capable when that dongle becomes available, and that's probably only $20 extra. So all in, still about $140. The Ninjutsu Sora 4K, $120 plus shipping, the better Nordic controller. The 4K dongle is included, as well as extra skates. The Ninjutsu Sora V2, right now is $100 plus shipping. It comes with the skates included, and you have the option whether you want to install small skates or large skates. The 8K dongle will be available soon, probably for about $20 more. All of these options still putting you below the $150 price point of the Alienware Pro Mouse. If you're set on 4K and 8K polling, you don't care whether the mouse is wired or wireless, and you're looking for the best price to performance, by far the Endgame Gear OP1 8K is the best deal. It's $75 plus shipping. Everything can be tweaked to your liking, and of course, it pulls at 8K. You won't even notice the wire. It's got the best paracord cable you can get. And it's half the price. It's half the price of this. Literally almost any Pulsar released since the X2 V2 in fall of last year. Lanzu's 4K mice. Those are $100. All of those have the Nordic 52840 controller. They come with additional PTFE feet. They come with additional grips. And Lanzu has the best unboxing experience out of any manufacturer bar none. All of that for $40 to $50 less than this. With this, like I showed in my initial impressions video, you get an alien sticker. There's no extras included with this. So yeah, not a great value. By now, I think I drove the point home that this mouse is simply not worth it. There's so many superior options available. This mouse does nothing to differentiate itself. It does nothing better than any competitors. Unless you play for Team Liquid and you get this mouse for free. And even then, you know, still probably not, to be honest. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. As always, there will be plenty more peripheral content coming your way this month. And I'll see you in the next one.